Hi folks, I'm Chris Marshall with Woodworkers Journal Magazine. When I was building these green and green nightstands, I wanted to use as much quarter sawn mahogany as I could so I could really capitalize on this beautiful ribbon stripe grain pattern. And when it came to making these big side panels, I sure didn't want to settle for any boring flat sawn veneer that you'll find on a lot of mahogany plywood these days. Instead, this project seemed like a perfect opportunity to make my own custom quarter sawn mahogany veneer and then bond that to some thinner plywood substrate that would only be visible from inside the cabinet. I decided to make my veneer thick. This is about a quarter of an inch thick because I had some extra stock on hand and I knew that it would be easier to work with thicker veneer than thinner veneer. So I started with some four quarter lumber, resawed it down the center, edge glued it into a couple of panels and then ran them through my planer down to about 5 16 of an inch thick. But that still posed a challenge for me. How would I bond my thick veneer to the plywood substrate to make sure that I would get a uniform glue bond all around, not trap any air pockets inside the panels and ultimately end up with flat panels too? I knew that I was going to have to press these somehow. Well, when it comes to pressing veneer, essentially there are two options. One, you can take your veneer and substrate, sandwich it between a couple of flat platens and then clamp it all around like there's no tomorrow. But it takes a lot of clamps. The other option is to vacuum bag it. And the concept is pretty simple. You put your contents inside of a thick plastic bag, seal it so it's airtight, suck all the air out of the inside of the bag and then air pressure outside of the bag forces down on it and flattens everything out. And that seemed like the better solution here. So I hopped online to see if I could find an affordable vacuum bagging solution for this project and I ran across this thin air press kit. It's sold by a company called Roar Rocket Skateboarding Company that's R-O-A-R-O-C-K-E-T dot com. And these kits are made for building the veneer decks for skateboards. And as it turned out, this was the perfect solution for this little vacuum bagging scenario. For about $60, the kit includes this heavy duty plastic bag that has a resealable strip along one edge and a one-way valve on top. You get a large piece of plastic netting and that goes on top of your veneer to help improve air circulation and you get this hand pump for drawing the air out. Now Roar Rocket offers four different sizes of these thin air press kits. This is the 26 by 28 inch size and as I say the kit is reusable this resealable strip is made out of kind of a soft tar-like material that sticks to itself over and over again. And when the seal finally wears out, the company provides you with two more coils of it so you can replace it when you need to. This kit is a much cheaper solution than if you were to buy an electric vacuum pump, which would cost hundreds and hundreds of dollars more. So with all this said, here's how I use the thin air press kit to lay up my veneer panels. First I cut my substrate plywood and veneer about a half inch larger in length and width than I needed. Then I made sure the contact surfaces were completely clean by vacuuming them off carefully. I didn't want any sawdust or debris mucking up the process. I also made this platen out of 3 quarter inch MDF that's a little bit larger than my veneer panel all the way around. It'll go inside the vacuum bag to make sure that my panel remains flat when I draw a vacuum and I knocked off all the sharp edges and corners of the platen with a roundover bit in my router to make sure that the platen won't damage my vacuum bag. Now if I were laying up extremely thin veneer, the right glue to use would be one that's formulated specifically for veneering, like Tight Bond's Cold Press for Veneer Glue. It's got a thicker viscosity to help prevent it from bleeding through the wood pores and potentially showing through the veneer on top. But because my veneer is so thick, I could use an ordinary PVA wood glue like Type On 3. Type On 3 has got a little bit longer open time, so I'd have more time to apply it. I used a foam paint roller and rolled a coating of glue onto both the plywood substrate and the veneer. Work reasonably fast so the glue doesn't start to cure. 
there's no need to thin the glue. Then I laid the pieces together and I left one set of edges offset from one another so I could use the protruding part as a reference edge for trimming the panel to size later. Tack along one edge to keep them from sliding out of alignment during vacuum bagging. Now with your panel glued and tacked, you're ready to load the vacuum bag. Starting with your platen, your veneer panel, and a piece of this plastic mesh that comes in the kit. Cut it to size so it's a little bit larger than your veneer panel. It basically just serves as a spacer layer on top and another means for the air to escape around the panel. Then seal up the bag by peeling off this layer of protective paper. And the instructions say to put that paper inside the bag so that you don't lose it. Now obviously when you're sealing the bag it's important to get a good airtight seal here uh, to keep air from breaching the vacuum. And that's pretty easy to do because this resealable material is so tacky. What you don't want to do though is stretch the opening of the bag by really pulling this along to press the two sides of the bag together. The best way to do it I found is just to push straight down with your fingers or the edge of a dowel and just go along the whole length without stretching the bag to make sure you've got a good connection all along the opening, especially at these two edges. And now you're ready to pump the air out of the bag. The pump just fits on top of this one-way valve and every time you pull up on the handle you're evacuating more air from the bag, even if at first it doesn't seem like you are. After about a minute or two of pumping, you'll start to see the bag form fitting around the panel. Here's a closer vantage point so you can watch exactly what happens too. Watch how the, the uh, bright uh, reflective areas of the bag change here as I pump the air out. It's a little bit like vacuum bagged food. And while the pump is not drawing out that much air with each pump, it's definitely working. Or you would hear air escaping past the seal. Now you're probably starting to see some changes in the bag. The vacuum is definitely building inside. Like I say, it takes it takes a minute or two to draw all the air out. It's a fairly good sized bag. A lot of little air pockets. But I'm starting to see the mesh coming through the top of the bag and I'm not seeing many loose areas any longer. Now the goal is to keep pumping until the valve starts to click, and we'll hear that shortly. Now almost all the air is out of the inside of the bag, and it's getting much harder to pump. Oh, there goes the clicks. The clicking tells you that all the air is sufficiently voided, and that uh, your vacuum bag is at full pressure. And you'll know you're at full vacuum too because any little pleats or folds in the bag you can't pull away from the platen or the panel. Everything is pressed down tight. So now you just have to wait for the glue to dry, but it's a good idea to check on it periodically just to make sure that seal is holding and you're maintaining a good vacuum. And when your panel dries and you're ready to take it out of the vacuum bag, you need to break that vacuum. This one-way valve on top of the bag is flexible and it has a toggling feature. Just toggle this little nipple in the center to one side and you'll hear the air rush back in. Now 
then pry open the seal. And pull everything out of the vacuum bag. Including that little paper strip. And then stick that down in place over the seal. So your bag will be all set to go the next time you need to use it. And if your vacuum bagging was successful, you should end up with a nice flat panel with the veneer and substrate bonded tightly all around. I trim my panel to final size using the reference edge to guide the first trim cut and a crosscut sled to even up the ends. Then I planed my panel down until its thickness fit the grooves in the nightstand rails perfectly. This thin air press kit was a simple and affordable way to lay up veneered panels and it sure worked great for my green and green nightstand project. If you give it a try, I hope you'll like it too. Thanks for watching.